Hello guys and welcome. In this new episode, I would like us to talk about the 408 request timeout error, which is a very common HTTP request error when we deal with RESTful services. Let's start by defining what is a request timeout error. This is simply an error that occurs when the maximum allowed time allocated for a request has reached without the request being completed. This can be due to a client timeout which we call a 408 request timeout error and that's what we're going to say in this video and very few times it can be due to the server timeout but we're not going to talk about the server timeout in this video the client timeout can be subdivided into three parts the first one being the connection timeout this determines how long can the client wait for the connection to be established with the server the second part is the write timeout the write timeout is simply uh, how long can uh, the connection stay open while data is being moved from the client to the server? The third part is the read timeout. The read timeout is simply how long can the client stay and wait to receive a response from the server, right? So this is basically three different parts of a 408 request timeout error. So having said that, what are the various causes of a 408 request timeout error? The first one is the poor network connection. Bear with me that we are in an environment where the connection is very unstable and the quality is not that good, right? So poor connection can significantly be a cause for a request timeout error. The second one is the huge size of data transferred from the client to the server. Of course, if the amount of data transfer to be transferred from the client to the server is too large, of course, there's high chances for us to experience a 408 request timeout error. The third reason can be due to the execution of long running operations on the server. If the server re receives a request from the client and takes a lot of time to process this request of course the client may wait and wait and after that after a time through an error because it can't continue waiting for the server right so having said that what can we do in order to avoid this situation the first solution i can say is providing reasonable values for the various timeouts because when you are coding when you are doing your programming or uh, when you are about to send a request you can determine what will be the value for the connection timeout what can be the value for the write timeout what can be the value for the read timeout of course you can provide this value so i think you can you should provide reasonable values given that uh, you should know your target uh, you should know the, the location of your target users because your users may be in a place where the connection is very 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 bad and if the value to provide for this read uh, write and read write and connection are too small of course even with a good connection users may experience a request timeout so you the values provided for this should be uh, reasonable values the second one is the long running operations i think long running operations should be done asynchronously yes because it makes no sense to send a to, for the client to send a request to the server and wait too long to receive a response from the server right so long long running operations should be done asynchronously and the client can be uh, informed also asynchronously maybe through a uh, message queue why not i think the third solution also uh, should be caching caching is a very important aspect when we are talking about the client client server client server paradigm or communication caching is a very important aspect caching significantly reduces the response time and so by so doing prevent you or avoid us the situation of having request timeout error and the last one but not the least is the data compression data compression is very very important especially in applications where data is transferred a lot between the client and the server it's true that our protocols already implement a basic level of data caching they are sorry a basic level of data compression but I think that if we deal a lot of uh, if we deal with a lot of data, we should uh, provide a, a bit an advanced data compression mechanism in such a way that the data transferred between the client to the server will be very small and hence prevent us from having uh, request timeout error. I think that's what I wanted to share with you guys in this video. I'm happy you watched till the end. Thank you for watching. Um, 
like share and subscribe if you like what we do and please don't forget to drop comments in to drop your comment in the comment section below so that we can get back to you and probably to respond to your question thank you very much and see you in the next one peace thank you